all my ghoulish fiends out there, and welcome to a spooky and special edition of the All Canadian Reptile Girl. Today is Halloween, obviously, and I can't think of a better time to delve into the topic of ophidiophobia or a fear of snakes. Let's see if we can figure out why some people have been so afraid of these amazing creatures like Hobbs here since, like, the dawn of time. And then, maybe if I'm feeling brave, I'll face one of my fears on camera for your entertainment, because it certainly won't be entertaining for me. Now, I intended to do this whole video in costume, but with Hobbs, my spookiest snake's natural curiosity, this just isn't working out, eh, buddy? We're talking smearing my makeup, making my headpiece fall off, the works, even getting in my clothes, so this is just... So, I'm gonna go get changed. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Okay, that's better. Now we can start to look at the scary side of snakes without any more distractions. By the way, we had to switch out Hobbs for Tutuba because he just wasn't in a great mood for filming. But this is fitting because Tituba is named after the very first person tried as a witch in the Salem Witch Trials. So perfect for Halloween video, right? So let's ask the obvious question. Where does a fear of snakes come from? If you ask someone who is afraid of snakes to tell you about the bad experience they had, which made them fear snakes, most people don't have a story to tell you. They just are afraid of snakes. Why is that? And are these fears even valid? I suppose if you live somewhere where there are venomous snakes, this could give someone a legitimate reason to be afraid. Not that they necessarily should be, just that it's understandable if they are. But here in Ontario, Canada, we don't have any lethally venomous snakes, really. So why are there still so many people that I know who are scared of these coiling creatures? Well, even before the biblical story of humans getting the boot from the garden because of a snake, it seems that we humans have it hardwired in our brains to be afraid of them. Apparently, our primate ancestors learned to identify and fear snakes. And, as staying alive was a crucial part of the continuation of the species, which is that stands to reason, the fear of snakes was something that was passed down to the next generations in our DNA. But surely we have evolved past that. I mean, biologically, we should be afraid of hurtling down the road at 100 kilometers an hour. But few people have issues with driving. Falling from height is deadly, but millions of people live in high-rise apartment buildings with no imminent fear of death. Humans have easily overcome all sorts of biological dispositions. So why the hang up on snakes? Cultural reinforcement, that's why. At least, I think that's a big part of it. Hollywood loves a great villain, so what better villain can you have than a snake, right? From our heroes not liking snakes very much, I hate snakes, Shock! I hate them! To a firm stance that comes from the word of the ancient Modishuans in the fifth element. See the snake, really. The ultimate evil. Snakes tend to be portrayed in a negative light. And how many monster movies are out there with snakes being the bad guy? Let me see, there's Anaconda, Anaconda the Search for the Blood Orchid, which is set in Borneo, which is about 18,000 kilometers away from where anacondas are actually found in the wild. Super great job on realism, Hollywood, on your 100-foot giant man-eating snake. There's Mega Snake, Piranaconda, Piranaconda, really? There's Python, the Cult of the Cobra, Megaconda, and who is the impressionable young boy being told to stay away from in the Jungle Book? Ka, an Indian python. Nothing like setting it straight in the minds of children everywhere that snakes are tricksters and cannot be trusted because they only want to eat us. Thanks for that, Disney. I have had it with these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday play! There's the basilisk in Harry Potter, which if you look closely is actually a legless lizard, so let's just use Nagani, Voldemort's familiar. Um, a snake is supposed to be scary because it was chosen to be the animal companion of the bad guy. Please! 
You know what would be scary? Choosing a familiar that would never be associated with evil. Like a dog. <laughs> or a sweet cat like Oscar. <laughs> or a bunny rabbit. <laughs> and it's all over social media too. My mom found this a few weeks ago. I just can't even with this meme. I mean, I get what it's saying about the message about not letting false or manipulative people back into your life, but that first sentence, um, yeah, cause it's a snake. It's not like it's gonna shed its skin and morph into a unicorn or something. This fear and negative role of snakes has even slithered its way into our holidays. Take Halloween, for example. Aside from references to horror movies or the undead in all their terrifying forms, Think about what decorations we use to help create the perfect spooky setting. There are always rats, bats, and yup, you guessed it, snakes! But what if it wasn't snakes that we'd been taught to fear? What if it was dogs? Which are a much more dangerous animal. Just think of all the furry, tail wagging, slobbery kisses and companionship we'd have missed out on all these years. My point is this, a fear of snakes is taught. And as such, that education can be relearned and updated. Take my mom, for example. She has feared and hated snakes her whole life. That is until a couple of years ago when she finally let me get my first pet snake. So what caused this sudden shift in her thinking? What made my mom switch her belief that these danger noodles were worthy of her care and affection? Well, the short answer is me and my love of reptiles. Because she understood that this is what I wanted to do with my life, she overcame her fear of snakes. And aside from that being totally amazing, how did she do that? Well, let's take a minute to understand the psychology behind fear. And then maybe I will face one of my own fears. Fear, which is what I'm feeling right now, thinking about confronting the hairy lump of nightmare fuel over there. Their body is 100% totally natural and biochemical response to a harm or perceived threat, regardless of whether or not that fear is real or imagined. It was interesting to learn that there are two primary reactions to a perceived threat. First is the biochemical reaction, which is pretty straightforward. It's just sweating, heart racing, adrenaline pumping through your veins like rocket fuel, prepping us to either fight or flee from the perceived danger. Then there's the emotional reaction, which is very personal, and this branches into a few different groups. Let me ask you, do you know someone who loves scary movies? Hi, hello there. And then someone who gets nightmares from the Disney Halloween special. I'm looking at you, mom. I was seven. Or someone who loves the adrenaline high of riding a roller coaster, dad versus someone who does not like being hurtled through the air at neck-breaking speeds. Even though two people can go through the same experience, it's a very personal choice as to whether or not that experience is positive or negative. If you were to ask my mom how she overcame her fear, she'd say that she took some time to really understand what she was afraid of happening and then took all the emotion of the equation and looked at her fear rationally. She was always afraid of two things. One, the snake attacking her, and the irrational fear of the snake swallowing her whole. Yes, for real, swallowing her whole. Which was the easier of the two to fix, you know, because of math and biology. She worked hard to change her thinking from, that snake wants to kill me, to, that snake did not wake up today with the intent to kill me, and it wants very little to do with me at all. It took months but she's no longer afraid of any of the snakes we have. Instead, she loves taking them out of their enclosures and playing with them and showing them off to family and friends. And actually looks forward to going to the pet store slash pet expos slash whatevers and meeting and handling new snakes. I'm really proud of her for accepting my love of these amazing creatures and overcoming her fears. Knowing what I'm about to do, I'm feeling the impending doom creep its way through my entire body. I can appreciate and empathize with how hard that was for her. Okay, I'm about to face my fear. 
because there are a lot of people out there who are afraid of snakes and feel about snakes the way I feel about that thing over there. And if I want those people to begin to understand and accept that snakes aren't evil, then I need to do the same thing with spiders, starting with that one. The first step in dissolving fear is to face it. And for me, that includes learning about this massive hairy spider. Because if I can begin to understand its behavior, I can begin to see it as a living thing that deserves my respect. So, let's do some exposure therapy. Yeah, I want to scare those... it. You're okay. I don't want to scare it. You're okay. This is Demon Spawn, Dark Lord of the Nightmare Realm. Can you tell I got to name her? Ah! Okay. This is a rose haired tarantula. She is not ours. Our friend Byron from Pet Paradise, London, Ontario, graciously loaned her to us for this video. Thanks for that, Byron. If you can't tell, I don't do spiders. My dad is the one who handles anything with more than four legs in our house, so this is way out of my comfort zone. But this species, I'm told, is very gentle and makes a great pet if you like animals without the best number of eyes, which is two, by the way. Two is the best number of eyes to have. These guys are from South America and live in the desert and scrublands. They are easy pets to care for. They don't need a lot of space, so a small tank is all you need. They don't require high humidity or special lighting. They are quiet, don't smell, are easy to feed and handle. For a terrifying murder beast, sorry, I mean tarantula, I don't want to make you upset, you have giant fangs. They make great pets. Demon Spawn, Dark Overlord of the Nightmare Realm, seems very gentle. My irrational fear is telling me that this is her lulling me into false sense of security and that she is going to jump off my hands and onto my face and eat my eyes out. But I'm going to tackle this using the rational part of my brain and look for the aspects of her that I find comforting. That's going to be hard. Deep breaths. I know the spider is harmless and can't really hurt me. She seems happy to just kind of walk along here with her terrifyingly confident legs. There's no sign of aggression or defensiveness. She's just kind of going with the flow. That's comforting, I guess. Her fur is very soft. It is unexpected. She has some sizable fangs, which are very scary. But I know that she has very weak venom. And they rarely bite. At least this species rarely bites. This isn't so bad, but I think I'm ready for her to go away now. Thank you very much. Bye. That experience was certainly an experience. What does that mean? It felt different than I expected. She was a lot lighter than I thought, and I was kind of expecting her to feel more solid, stiffer, with kind of picky pokey feet. I thought she'd feel like a giant bug, but her feet felt... I don't know, dainty. Kind of creepy. I don't know how I feel about the daintiness. She actually felt more like a proper animal. If I had my eyes closed and I didn't know what I was holding, I might have thought it was a mutated hamster or something, just with way more legs than you would expect. I'm pretty sure I'm still afraid of spiders and other bugs, but I'm happy I had this experience while scary. It was interesting. I think that'll do it for today. Thanks for taking this spooky journey through fear with me. Please don't forget to check out my other videos and follow me on Instagram for daily posts on my reptiles. And as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. The button's right here-ish. Don't be afraid to hit it. And of course, remember to nurture all nature, even the spiders. Happy Halloween! <laughs>
to pick it back up, then I'm not picking it up. I find with an abdomen, but his head is terrifying. How? 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 What are you doing? How did you get in my shirt? Help! Mom, I'm asking help. Oh, right. Sorry. I thought you were just going to deal with that on your own. Oh, he's through my shirt. Yeah, he's coming out here now. Oh, I did not know that. There you go. Look at you wear the snake lady. This is too small. <laughs> this is too small. <laughs> you need to take. <laughs> Are you okay for a second? <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, I knocked something over. It's okay. You're fine. Don't move. It touched you. Of course, it touched you. Let's go get Demon Spawn, Dark Overlord of the Nightmare Realm.